Mark Corkin is a MoDOT district engineer for the state's Southeast District. The district serves 25 counties and is the largest MoDOT district geographically. Crokin has been with them for 22 years in the field of transportation. Mark, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. 22 years, huh? It, yeah, it goes by quick. Yeah, so that we, in that intro, talked about that geographic area. So that, that's the biggest in the state. It, it is, it's quite the challenge. I can actually drive five hours and still be in the area that's in the Southeast District. So uh, as you said, it, that can present some challenges then? It, absolutely. Um, you know, I try to get out as much as I can, but um, you know, I, I live pretty close to Cape, so this is kind of the metropolitan area of the district, and that helps being right here. We were talking before we started about different initiatives that, that MoDOT currently has going on. Um, we're going to try to get to a handful of those. I know there's a lot in the works right now, uh, but specifically uh, there's a project, uh, Route 25, uh, Route K there at Gordonville, and I know that uh, you're looking at some different ways to, to make that area safer for, uh, for travelers. Absolutely. There's been a lot of interest at that 25 and K intersection, and um, we've studied it and determined that a roundabout would really be the best solution to move forward with there. I, I had told a lot of people that um, I really thought we'd be building it this summer, but we had a um, public meeting in December, early December, had a great turnout, over 40 people, which that's, that's a lot for a public meeting. And they gave us some ideas that um, helped us and we're gonna make it a little bit better, but we had to buy some more property, so it'll be this fall before it gets put out for bid. So I really don't expect to see that work until next summer now, which would be 24. Okay, so a project like that, how, how does that come about? Is that you get, you get calls, obviously you monitor safety records in those areas, but what kind of goes into saying, okay, yeah, we've, we've got to take care of something here? We, we have a lot of different avenues that projects start. Um, asset management is normally the biggest way, just taking care of roads and bridges, and when we do that, we try to look to improve the area. This one, we had um, the, the interchange at Center Junction going on, and we put some temporary signals here, and um, when we did that, we took a hard look at how could we improve this and saw that there were a few accidents and looked for ways to improve that. We, we actually made some temporary improvements. We saw the bulk of the problems were people leaving Cape kind of headed south on 25. Um, they would assume that people were gonna turn and they would pull out in front of them and get hit. Um, so we were able to offset that northbound direction pretty easily, but a roundabout will be a much better solution that will allow tra traffic to continuously flow and um, be safer. There's really very minimal chance of a wreck in a roundabout. I know we've seen some roundabouts pop up in Cape, uh, which I think kind of scare people at first, but um, it, it seems to be something that we're seeing more of. They, they work really well, especially if you have directional traffic. In that area, it's absolutely directional. People, heavy motion one way in the morning to school and a heavy motion one way away from school at, at the end of the day. You mentioned the Center Junction project. Were you spending a lot of time at Center Junction? Well, I, I moved back to the area a couple years ago, so I got here for the end of that. Um, Center Junction, it, it really worked out. A lot of the concerns with shutting down traffic or the impacts came when COVID did. So we were able to get that work done when there really wasn't a lot of traffic on the road. And I appreciate everybody working with us as we got that completed. Uh, some other projects that I know have recently been completed, there was some work on, uh, on Route 177 in Cape. Yeah, 177 is unique. We don't do a lot of flood mitigation, but um, that's a pretty important route. And um, it, it was flooding in two different places. So we built a bridge where there was a culvert and I, we did have a little bit of trouble with the bridge. You know, southeast Missouri, there's rock in areas and it's not always, you know, you can drill and you can look and then it's not there when you build the bridge. So the bridge took quite a bit longer than we expected, but then we had a drought with no rain and there's another section a little bit closer to town if you knew where Midwest Block and Brick was. Yep. You know, raised the road quite a bit right there. It, it should be a good five feet above the highest flood we've ever had. So that road shouldn't have to worry about closing again. So traffic should be good in theory for several years to come there. Absolutely. We'd had, had a run of some pretty major floods and um, I know that was impactful to the businesses unplanned and I appreciate them cooperating with us as we were able to finish that work up. And again, a project like that, something you guys identify is, you know, we have a need, we're hearing from people and let's 
see what we can get done. That actually even went through a statewide kind of process, uh, trying to look for some flood remediation, what was the highest need, and that kind of came to the surface as, you know, really this is a, a major highway that um, should have, should be flood resistant. We have a couple minutes left. I know there's initiatives that MoDOT is a part of. One of those very important, uh, the Buckle Up Phone Down initiative. Oh, absolutely. Buckle Up Phone Down is, is pretty well what it says, is you, you need to buckle your seatbelt when you get in the car and you need to put your phone down. Um, on Missouri roads, average three people die a day and two of them are unbuckled. So it's so important and distracted driving has really taken over. So we've had a couple partners. Um, AAA has actually helped us expand a program to where we have a buckle up phone down challenge. Um, earlier in the year, we had it with high schools and high school students where they could win money for their prom or their project graduation. And right now there's one going on with businesses. So if a business has five or more people, they could compete uh, to win money from AAA from the Buckle Up Phone Down Business Challenge. And, and it's as, as easy as sign in a pledge. The more people in your company you get to sign the pledge that they will put their phone down and that they will wear their seatbelt when they drive, the better chance you have of winning. And, and some of the prizes, I mean, like first place is $7,500. So the second is 6,000 and then 5,000 is third place. And there's a lot of like $25 um, participant awards that if your name gets drawn for, for participating and joining that effort. I've watched that Buckle Up Phone Down campaign start in Missouri and it's growing to a lot of the states across the nation. We were talking also before, you wanna hear from the public if there are uh, questions people have, there are issues, what's the best way to reach out to MoDOT? You know, it's that time of year, we have a lot of trash talk, picking up trash, right. and we have the Buckle Up Phone Down Challenge and we have projects, anything you wanna know, you can look at our website at www.modot.org, but if you can't find it, you can always call 1-888-ASK-MODOT, and we have people that answer the phone that really want to help you. They're, they're super nice, they, they want to help customers, that's why they're there. If you've got anything you need from MODOT at all, feel free to give them a call. All right, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. We've been talking with MODOT Southeast District Engineer Mark Corkin.